I'm under the opinion that sometimes everybody needs roasted a little bit in case a person might take themselves too seriously. Now, why wait? Why would I choose to roast Joe Rogan, who knows the top comedians in the business? So he should have plenty of people more qualified than me to roast him. But those people he knows, see, he's at the very top of the game. He's what you could say, he's sort of the emperor of stand-up comedy, if you will. So all the other comedians benefit from coming on to his show and being his friend. So they might be a little bit leery. And then the next tier of stand-up comedians even more leery because they have hopes of getting on the show for the first time and getting that, as it's known, the big Joe Rogan boost. So that's where I come in because I am, although not knowing the man, I'm very much familiar with him because I've watched a lot of his podcast. I've fallen asleep to a lot of his podcast. Now that's not to say it's uh, just because they're boring. Uh, it's because they're long. They're very long, and that, and also see, he used to be on YouTube, the very same platform that this is at. But he moved to Spotify, and when he did, he a uh, few of his podcasts. I don't know if it's because of content they had. Or Spotify just didn't want those podcasts, but he left some behind. So he's kind of like a roommate that's moved out and he's left some dirty laundry here. So the podcasts that I tend to fall asleep, wake up to as they come in on autoplay, are the same ones over and over again. Now, in reality, if you watch a Joe Rogan podcast, the man's actually a very good listener. But in dream space, when I, you know, when one of these Joe Rogan podcasts becomes part of my dream, I'm always trying to interject my opinion, and he never <laughs> listens to me. He just goes on talking to Brett Weinstein or whatever, and um, so perhaps it's deeply embedded in my subconscious this animosity for not having been heard by Joe Rogan. So there's that, and there's also the fact that I. I keep stepping on the same dirty Jordan Peterson towel that's on the floor, you know, the same ones over and over again. But also, you know, just out of a matter of respect, that him being emperor, perhaps somebody needs to say that maybe the emperor, just because he's at the top, doesn't mean he necessarily has the best jokes. <laughs> now, I think maybe somewhere in Joe Rogan's subconscious, he might know that because when he moved to Austin, he made a studio resemble a bomb shelter. But that's deeply embedded in his subconscious, not on the surface, because on the surface, the man's playing... Uh, civic centers, you know, it's only the biggest comedians in the business play civic centers like uh, Dane Cook once did. Keep that in mind. And also, he got there somewhat on the tales of Dave Chappelle when they he started playing these big coliseums and whatnot. So you got to consider. Dave Chappelle might have ulterior motives because if he wants to tell us, it takes, you know, part of comedy is having the right contrast. Right. Having the comedian that performs with you, you might want to have the right contrast. So he's got Joe Rogan can go out and do his set. And then that might make Chappelle's sad story about a transgender person committing suicide actually seem funny. <laughs> and not only that, but uh, when the trans, keeping on the transgender thing, Joe adds a nice balance to that because not only has Joe Rogan shared his platform with at least one oh transgender God. person before, but also he could it could be said that he has used non-binary prefixes because Mr. Joe Rogan has also been known as Miss Information. <laughs> so, there's that. But you can still, I know him well enough to know he doesn't read the comments, so he might be missing out on some of the roast that could happen in there. I mean, he said that on his podcast, that he doesn't read the comments. So, he might miss a little bit there. And also, you got to consider that the man's very prone to think of things on a conspiracy level so if nobody laughs he might just think that that's a conspiracy now this is where i 
<laughs> Part of the big reason why I like Joe Rogan, I think the best piece of dirty laundry he left behind on YouTube was this Alex Jones uh, <laughs> interview. So I'm like-minded in Joe Rogan that I think of things in a conspiracy possibility way because I think that, you know, something Joe might not have considered <laughs> is that he could be part of a big conspiracy to see with all of his followers being young men and the ones that are interested in conspiracy theories, perhaps it's been his job to get them into MMA and UFC so they can sustain terrible brain injuries, getting kicked in the head and punched in the head. And so even the conspiracies that they do understand when they try and articulate them, they get them wrong, and the ones that they believe aren't necessarily the best ones. So when they try and talk about conspiracy theories, they end up just saying, the earth is flat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Have a good night.